This is the full story of the young Dolph setup and why he was taken to Makita's. To find out what happened, watch this whole video and subscribe to the channel. They literally had Dolph right there and had him say everything, the pin codes and everything to him when they was taking him up. It happened at the community center first. Memphis is where it all went down there. And this is something that we all can really take, like, take for initiative and really looking into the fact of the information that was just released. They already put that man on the scene. They put that man, and when I say that man, I want to let y'all know Maurice Hill, they got him. I want y'all to understand Maurice Hill is gone, y'all. They can't find Maurice Hill. He missing, y'all. Pamela Hill, she told the DA that was basically had them in the interrogation room trying to get the information from the video. You see what I'm saying? Because I want y'all to know that they see everything that happened and this is why they've been so quiet for so long. I want y'all to know one thing. These the same people who FaceTime Glorilla and told Glorilla, you're going to have to stay a little, you're going to have to stay away from him for a, a little while, man, because it's going to go down. Exactly. And the last time that they seen Maurice is when he's backing into the side of Makita's when the person that's, they couldn't even get a good look at him because they was trying to enter into the door. So, but they heard the motor running and everything like that. And whoever that came up to him and took him out, the car door got left open. So by the time that they got outside, this is how everybody knows that they actually went and got the revenge for Young Dolph. Like people in Memphis right now, there's people close to Moneybag Yo, there's people close to the cookie shop, there's people close to a lot of different things, but it keeps going around, man. Big Moochie Grape is definitely getting out next because he knows that somebody that robbed him before who is um, going to actually come back around. They got his chains, actually. And so this is the reason why you got to understand that he hasn't been speaking up lately about the Young Dolph situation because they know that that interview that they did with him, he seen what happened in Makita's when he pulled up with Key Glock's brother. They was both going there and they blocked him off from going. By that time, the gate was already up and they knew that it was people inside the cookie shop that was already there before Dolph was. And I know it kind of seems suspicious because they found Maurice's car and it's like the evidence that was inside of it, it pointed back to the piece of paper that was found right behind the big sign, you know, the bulletin of like the per like just the advertising Makita's right there in the back. If you really look at it, like you can see they taped off every every area of that diameter. I want y'all to really look at what's going on because everything goes back to that stain that they found under the open sign that's in Makita's. And I know a lot of people, if you in Memphis, you guys know for a fact, if you look to the right side where the cash register is at, you will be able to see this is where they said that the other four people who was in there ordering with Dolph, with Dolph and not to say they're literally right there with Dolph, like as if they came with Dolph. No, these were people who was basically ordering cookies too because not just one person comes to a cookie shop. That's why Young Dolph had somebody with him, which was Marcus Thorne. And this all really points back to the cashier because the cashier, she's, yeah, she's doing good now. She was traumatized a little bit, but at the end of the day, she overcame that. And now she's working back at Makita's and Makita Raven, she said she'll never be away from the shop because all she knew is she told her father, yeah, hey man, my father told me it was, hey, it was quick. It was quick and black youngster, he already, he confirmed the fact that everything was revealed once Maurice Hill basically left behind evidence which pointed back to CMG.
And if you look closely at the picture, you can hear the hair, somebody moving with the headrest, but you can hear it with your eyes, the fact that if you look closely, Makita's Raven, she likes to cook, so she's always gonna be back at the cookie shop back at the end of the day. The fact that when she returned from the 30 day suspension for the no gloves, she was ready to be back at it, but she doesn't want, when the dude came in and he ordered the Dolph cookies, they said they discontinued it due to obvious reasons. And now the fact that when Key Glock's auntie was inside there, and they all was lined up. Basically, he was Dolph was waiting in line, and you could really tell by the fact that um, Maurice came in, and you know they said hi to everybody and everything like that. And that's when the back door swung open. But you can't tell that the camera that's at the corner of the building on the white awning underneath the plank wood is actually belonged to the owners 24/7. The only people that can see that and have access to it is the owners and that points right where the glass is before young Dolph even got there people already had his posters and stickers on the whole entire thing because he was actually known to be like frequent and stopped there before they were trying to show that he had a big um, major thing coming up in the turkey drive they put the signs there and everything and if you really look at the fact that they got the quotation marks underneath the butter cookie sign. You will see the person that's walking in. The air conditioning unit can easily fall and hit somebody in the head. Like the fact that the only reason that they did this was because you got to see that he was locked. It was he was trapped inside, and so he knows this. And what's going on is that it was somebody that was walking by with the V-neck, and they seen everything that was happening on. The fact that Dolph had the glasses on means that he couldn't have seen this coming. It was inside the building and the sun was just rising. And so he it was already blurry. And you got to watch out for the fact that the people that followed him, they was looking at the backseat the whole time. Anybody that's following somebody or actually is trying to like figure out where they are going and watching them, the person that's the most actually dangerous is in the back seat because the person in the back seat is usually the one that pops out and does all the work. They dump on site when they see the people. And usually the guy that came up masked up with the hat and gloves and, and seen the fact that the customers was ducking and everything like that, that's when they got a chance to grab a hold of him and move him back, man. I want y'all to understand that this whole entire thing is being looked at and Mia J is trying to get to the bottom and get to the justice for Adolf because the whole filing cabinet is getting bigger and bigger. There's more pieces of paperwork in the envelope that's coming in from the DA's office. They found out that the indictments is going to be including the RICO charge plus the enhancements due to the fact that there was already existing beef among multiple groups inside that entire network of that entire hub of going that's going around in the city of Memphis. And look, People are gotta know that this is a small unit that's working on this, man. The, the whole entire team is figuring out why the SWAT is coming up to do the raids every now and then. Like every other day, is more and more people that's getting taken out. And so a lot of the people in the streets was hurrying up because they understand that there's at least 17 PRE chains that's out there. And Gucci Man has 10 of them and they trying to retrieve them. So this is really a battle of trying to get all the Dolph's things that were scattered around, the treasures and the, um, and the jewels that were scattered around inside of the capsule. And that's what's making everybody trying to set him up and everything. A big, big reward was placed. And you gotta understand when they cut the ribbon and young Dolph came to take the picture with them in front of the red carpet, everybody was present, including Mia J and the whole people that was the owners of the shop and everything like that. So you cannot say that he didn't show him love. And the fact that they seen the shoe prints that was left in the oil spill and the oil slick inside the parking lot and it came back to a black Air Force One, man. The footage shows clearly that there was two guys in the gray sweatshirts that was coming out. And when you see the way that the wrinkles were, you, you will know that it's the same exact actual figure as the, the whole shadow of what Govans look like. And that's why they're saying that Govans is basically in, implicated in this whole entire thing, man. 
And when they did the interview and they went and looked back with the eyewitnesses and the reports came out, they found that the shocking details led back to a string of events where it left a lot of people clueless and wondering because they was actually nervous to the fact that was this going to all get a cold case? And that's why they're saying that this is not going to turn into a cold case because when they got straight drop, he put his he put the thing down and said everything into the whole entire auditorium, man. Everybody was like, man, finally they're getting justice for Dolph because three people told out of the group. It was Straight Drop, Big Juke, and Govan Hernandez, man. At the end of the day, we know for a fact that they already said that the main people and the key players in this chess game, it, not that they deserve what happened, but we know for a fact that the, the, the attorney not finna just say just like this, okay, yeah, they, they proceeding with this case like this. No, like youngster, he don't like none of it that's going on because he regret even making a video at the scene. And I know a lot of people sit back there and they look at it like, black youngster needs to stay low key. Black youngster, he should have been the one that not even did that. The reason why they had him in, inside of the courtroom is for one reason. They wanted him to basically go in the interrogation room and talk to the lawyer. The lawyer has to like basically counter investigate what's really going on because the DA, they're going to basically tell the lawyer, yeah, this happened, this is the discovery. And your Gotti already told Black Young's sister, you need to you need to lay low key because it was your boyfriend who was the getaway driver in the white thing. You feel me? The GLE. I want y'all to understand what's going on because me and Jay, she already said, Big Moochie great. He going he gonna to get right on that phone, call them boys up, and they going to pull up regardless of what's going on. Dude had the mask on. Dude had to take the mask on in order for them to see his face. I want y'all to really understand, this is something that young Dolph, he wouldn't want to happen that quick. He knew for a fact, young Dolph, he was the main one in there. He saw everybody inside of that, and from what the footage is showing, he was the main one who told them, my brother gonna have my back regardless of what's going on. Because we know for a fact that if anything hit the fan, we gonna real live ride for each other. Because y'all know for a fact, that's why they had him in cuffs, man. They had the man in cuffs. This kind of, it kind of hurt Mia J because she know for a fact, Key Glock told Glorilla, I would mess with you. We would like, as far as we could do a song together, but I can't really rock with you like that because we made songs in the past with Black Youngster and Money Bad Yo, and now we into it. I want y'all to really understand what's going on because it's a sad situation that Young Dolph had to encounter. And when you really look at it, Snoop Bands, he like he he's sitting back looking at Maurice Hill like, you better tell your wife. She better be cool. And y'all gotta understand this is coming straight from Memphis and and Minnesota. Exactly. And when the two detectives came down the fire escape stairwell with the leather jackets on, they had the paperwork coming straight from the DA's office and they was looking for black youngster, AKA Sammy Davis Jr. And that's when the people that was sitting right there on the curb scattered, man. They fled the scene of the Makitas with three objects that was related to the young Dolph actual scene of when they found the interrogation the interrogation reporters did an interview with some of the people that was right there and the prominent suspect was the tow truck driver who got the car because they was related to the fact that they was early on the scene and before anybody else was there. When they did the live escort, they actually caused the way to get the getaway car to be able to get to Bradley Street on time. One thing you gotta understand is that the DOT tracked back the exact location of where the vehicle was parked due to the fact that they gave him the magnetic sticker on the registration tab. And what you, what you gotta see is that the person that was standing right there behind with the hood on 
right next to the guy with the Bass Pro Shop hat. He dropped his New York Yankees cap on the ground and it slid underneath Dolph's car. That's why you did not see it in the picture. You got to zoom in closely. When you go back and see, we'll show you right there. And when they towed away the car from the parking lot, everybody from inside came out and seen somebody pick that hat up and took off with it because it was an uncontrolled scene at that time. The parking lot had multiple people walking up to the window because they was taking pictures and recording to show the people who sent the hit and go on to te and text Tim the results of the whole entire situation, the hit that went on, man. They bought, they all got new chains after this happened. They gave every, each and single one of the people CMG chains after this happened and they all shot a music video and tried to get a deal going on. But before the marshal stepped in and stopped all of that when they interdicted them in Indiana, man, one thing you got to understand is that they should have never went to Gary, Indiana and tried to flee the scene over there because when they skip traced the location, they found out the exact pinpointed coordinates to where they were going and they because they were tapping Shondale's phone the whole time. And what happened is the fact that when they caught him up, the dude was nervous. He was there like shaking and everything like that. They were, Shondale and Straight Drop was sweating so much in the parking lot of the Makitas that they left a lot of things there for them to swab. And that's how they was able to figure out, okay, they know exactly who they was looking for because both of them have both been in the system before, man. And when they caught them up again, they was already there doing the same sweating and the same nervous. So they knew that it was the same people. And when they was running away, they seen that white car leaving and they knew that that was the one that was used inside of Straight Drop's music video. So they went right to the house where everything was going on and the car was right there again. And this is what makes and brings everything to basically a conclusion, more likely. However, we know for a fact that Straight Drop, he was the main one who told everybody, including Govan, and this goes out to you, Govan, Go Van, you need to lay low because the feds ain't playing no games. They let you out on bond all because of what you said in them statements. So I want to let everybody know CMG, they released a lot of information on the fact that Go Van, he was the main one who distanced himself from Black Youngster. All because Black Youngster told the feds when they walked up to the car, he won at Makita's, and he he basically, he had to say that before anything went down. And the person who was right there, who basically was interrogating them, who, who was asking the questions that they needed to know, and y'all got to understand, when they got you up in that jam, you can't call CMG, or you can't call nobody affiliated with PRE because Young Dolph, he got sent up, man. I want y'all to... Throw them R.I.P. dolls in the comment section because in all actual reality, we know for a fact that he was standing outside. And from what the lawyer basically said, and this is not Young Dolph's lawyer. I want to let you guys know one thing. This is Mia J's lawyer. Mia J, she already, she had to ride for Dolph. At the end of the day, that was her, her partner. Like at the, hey, at this point, I want you guys to know that the lawyer, he stated he was outside with that yellow shirt, man, and that white car was parked on the other side of the pump right before Marcus Thorne hopped out the other car. Y'all got to understand that, man, because the Porsche car, you know, the black one, y'all know, the black with the, y'all know with the red stripes on the side, with the, yay, hey, y'all already know, hey, with that rally stripe going down the top of the hood, Y'all got to look at what's really going on, man. That was the same car who was following behind the CA Corvette. And we know for a fact, in Young Dolph's case, he was the main one who told them that white, A, hey, that white GLE, they, A, hey, they already knew for a fact who was in there. And the lawyer, when, once he sat down and talked to Dolph before this even happened, because they had the lawyer on deck, regardless of what was going on. The lawyer, he's been a lawyer. It's just that me and Jay had to pay him again to basically see what happened to Dolph. He sat there in that blue shirt, 
with them tan khakis on, he said, I believe. He said, I believe. Like, I want y'all to understand this is something that Maurice Hill didn't know Pamela Hill was going to get wind of. And Pamela Hill, she was the main one. When they questioned her, and then they gave her that card and told her, you call me if you hear anything that's going on, and we will reach out to you. Regardless of what day, time of day it is, we'll reach out to you. Raven sat there and looked at it like, it was the one with the gray jogging pants with the black shoes. That's what she, That's how she looked at it. And I want you guys to understand, the way that they ran to that car, all it did was made, made them pop up like that, man. Once it popped up, they had to skip and instantly run back up and start loading. You feel me? I want y'all to understand what's going on, man. At the end of the day, Exactly, and when they seen Young Dolph with the yellow shirt, that's when they jump back into the car and change into the sweatsuits, and they hop back out there. The guy was standing right beside him in the tank top one minute, and the next minute, they jumping out the car out of back seat with the Draco dumping right to him, running towards him, man. So you can't say that they did not see that coming at all because they have to know exactly who that person is. They literally stay right down the road from everything that's going on, man. And that's why when they, a lot of people that are saying that the guys that they got first was not even the whole entire group that was actually a whole thing. Like there was somebody that put it to, these two did not think of every single thing. And that's why they had a driver. They had multiple people who was hiding them out and everything like that. You got to understand that the uncle came up and he ended up getting uh, looked just like Big 30's uncle. And he he's the one that ended up getting hit with a lot of the stuff that put Govan on to the whole game of telling. Like Big Juke was the one who realized first how much that that was going to save them when they ended up telling all the stuff because they know they could pin this all on Black Youngster due to the fact that he has the history of everything. He looked at them and literally was in their face the last time that they got together inside of that office building. And so that's why you got to realize that they went and broke apart, man. And once Big Jook spilled the beans on everything, there was he was looking at 60 years and they let him off scotch-free with a slap on the wrist because he's Yo Gotti's brother. So... He knows a lot of that situation. Then they bring Govan in two weeks later. They sit him down and the guy's telling him he give him a cup of uh, water. He give him a soda and some snacks and everything. Govan starts eating right away and starts telling. He says, so how much can you how much can you hook me up and get me off of if I really tell you everything that happens right now for the next three hours? He told him the whole entire story about what really happened to Yogati's sister. What really happened to Young Dolph and what really happened to every single person that was related and connected, Maurice's brother at the mall, the person who was Jeremiah Taylor in front of the Makita shop, Big Moochie Grapes cousin, and what happened to the other Haitians that was on the east side with Big Moochie Grape, man, inside of that U-Haul. And so, like we told y'all, they got him in, they snatched him first, the shoe was in the parking lot. When the guy sat there, and they showed up late. Yeah, they got Dolph's brother right there. Marcus Thornton was right there. But they was conversing and talking. They're like, he can't be the guy that did all of this damage right here. That's why they was like, okay, he's still pending. And that's why they put him away into, into the WPP so that they could figure out what's going to happen next. And so next one, Mia, J you got to understand that a lot of things is connected. Mia J's direct daughter is Glorilla. From a whole nother side, man, you got to understand that Dolph was not the first person that she ever talked to. And a lot of people got to understand that Dolph was not, the he was not talking to her at the same time. That's where the Yogati beef with the baby mama comes into play, man. Because when she hopped inside of Dolph's uh, Yukon truck and they went on tour, she went on tour with him. She did not call, answer Yogati's pager for 30 days straight when he was trying to get a hold of her out of a telephone booth. Until... This was back way back in the days of 08. They didn't even have no Instagram, social media, anything like that. And so if she was around right now, 
it would be a whole different thing because you would be able to understand exactly what was going on and what they did. In 2015, they said that Glorilla, when she went on tour with Dolph, they put it in his face that she was riding for Dolph. They picked up Dolph C8. Y'all know for a fact that Dolph C8 got them fast folks with their A, with their emblem in the middle. Y'all already know that center cap, and y'all already know what it say. Y'all know what that center cap say, boy. At the end of the day, I know a lot of people still mad about that, but y'all know for a fact don't pay too much money for that. This is something that we all can really pay attention to because all of the things from this state that he basically left to me and Jay, Black Youngster, he looking at it like, hold on. Glorilla is like, is rocking with them. Like it was a feud over there for a little while and they was mad because Glorilla was even with Dolph. Dolph told everybody, regardless of what y'all got going on, man, we still gonna do what we gotta do. And this is why we sit back and we look at it for what it is. We have to really open our eyes to the fact of the key players in this. Yo Gotti, he told them what happened. It, it popped out, it popped out. You cannot FaceTime the ops before you do a drill. You guys gotta really look at that because in all actual reality, we know for a fact this is a revolving door. And a lot of people need to sit back and really pay attention to what's going on because you have to really be mindful of the things you really like do when you go around your Gotti because your Gotti, he'll send you up, man, because he already knew for a fact that Starlito, Starlito didn't like what happened. That's why Starlito told Finesse two times, you better fall back, boy. You better fall back. This is why Finesse two times instantly pulled the mask up. He instantly started, he instantly, he leaned over, he, what you say? Lil' King run right up. This is why baby CEO, hey, y'all already know what's going on. Hey, this is something that it could have easily been avoided, but in all actual reality, it's too many people who played a role in this man. And Key Glock, he not looking at, he not looking at money bag, yo, like they cool. So in all actuality, we know for a fact that the white cop, that was the main one who they, who they ran from. Them people was in that shop and the same people that was in that shop, where else they gonna run to? They gonna run out of the shop and they gonna run to Family Dollar because Maurice Hill cop was parked right on the side. Y'all gotta really look at that, man. Maurice Hill, he already got that hole fixed up that he got in his trunk. Y'all know on the side of the fender, right there by the bumper, y'all know right there by the wheel wheel, right there by them chrome pieces on Maurice Hill, Lincoln, right there by the white wall. This is the Fed said, he already got Bondo put inside of the hole to even be able to seal it up, man. He went to Mako. He paid $450. They got the receipts, y'all. The receipts is, is out here now, y'all. And it's something that, it really shocked me. I was appalled by this. This is something that I didn't think was going to happen because Makita's is so close by Family Dollar and Yo Gotti already told them Big Jip got to be across the street instead of in Family Dollar parking lot. This is why Govan told because he knew for a fact there was too many cameras who saw the other people who was basically there. They said Govan was waiting at Family Dollar parking lot while they basically blocked him in. That's why they said Dolph had nowhere to go. That's why he couldn't even hop in the car and pull off because they already ambushed and, and basically ran up on them and sent them up. Y'all gotta really understand. They saw dude and them pull up there because they read the license plate. They instantly, this is the same car. I want y'all to really understand. This is sad, but in all actual reality, we need to really pay attention to what's going on because this could have been anybody in PRE who it happened to because they weren't just looking for Dolph. 
They were looking for anybody in PRE. This is why Marcus Thorne said, Key Glock, lucky he ain't come. This is why he said, Big Moochie Grape, lucky he had to do what he had to do. Nobody wanted to pay attention to the fact that Maurice Hill was the main one watching. He was watching right there by the laundromat. He looking at the fact that Shell to his left, it's a Shell gas station right to his left. He looking like, yeah, he looked to the side. He both ways, paying the room. He see Marcus Thorne instantly get put in the car. He instantly ain't even try to say nothing or say like, yeah, my daughter said that they ambushed him or whatever. They instantly looked at Marcus Thorne like, why Mar why Maurice Hill not helping you and you was in his shop and Young Dolph was there for them? He instantly ordered the cookies for the Pamela Hill. Pamela Hill was still at home. She was getting ready to get ready to go to the work. At the end of the day, we know this for a fact, man, no actual reality. And the first time Dolph went to the cookie shop was to drop Glorilla off when she was working there first because she was the first employee before Makita's Raven. And so that's why she even switched sides because Makita's Raven recruited them, man. When they was in the lunch break, in the, in the break room, they got into it over the over the whole fact that they took each other wigs and everything like that, man. And when she tried the Dolph cookie, they knew that they was gonna be able to have that. But the thing is, is that ever since that day, when Dro and Dolph kept dropping Glorilla off and keep picking her up and everything like that, that's when that's when he was actually forming the relationship. That's why the cookie shop people. This was before Dolph had any of his chains. He was dropping her off. And she, that's why a lot of people were surprised when she switched sides because they was thinking, okay, why was it that they was doing this? But the fact she was working at the cookie shop the whole entire time when Makita is raving, she convinced her to join CMG and to switch sides. This was the first person that Makita's raving was able to work with as the manager of CMG that she wanted to be. And they, you know, they gave her that because in exchange for the whole situation because they was able to get the access to Dolph, and that's what they wanted. And so everything played into effect, man. When they seen Young Dolph go up in Memphis to be the um, big artist and everything, he was going past Yo Gotti. And so they knew at that very moment that it was going to be a last time that he comes up to the cookie shop. If he did not give them a lot of the bread that, you know, that was going on inside the whole operation, it was two or three people who was dealing with the whole situation of in between the cookie shop, the owners and young Dolph, man. And when that Bentley truck came by, that's when everything changed because you got to understand that the three people that was the scrouching down by Maurice's car, they dusted the hubcap and it came back relating to the exact same sweatpants that was worn inside of that footage that you see of the two people walking up to the parking lot, man. And they came out of that getaway car right after it turned around the corner because the car did not just come from nowhere. It had to have come from down the street and they had to have pulled into the parking lot in order to even end up in front of the cookie shop. Straight drop. He hired the same lawyer that Yogati used when he was fighting that case back in 2007. 